welcome back to Veronica Says. This is kind of a part two video. I did a part one on coconut or beachy fragrances because it is summertime and we're in that mood to wear all of our coconutty tropical kinds of fragrances. I have so many in this category that I broke it up into two. Today's video is going to focus on fragrances that have tropical florals or smell tropical juicy. So I think I have 20 tea-ish, maybe a few more than that, and I'll try to go through them as quickly as possible. I do like to give a lot of options and videos at different price points and to meet different kinds of fragrance preferences. So I hope you don't mind the long list. I certainly enjoy sharing them with you and love the variety that fragrances bring to us, the options that they bring. And so I appreciate seeing videos with lots of options and enjoy sharing them with you. So for today's video, I want you to imagine that you are on that tropical vacation. You're at a resort, maybe the resort is fancy and you're getting ready to go out to dinner. You've got your beautiful little dress on with flowers. Maybe I should have worn a floral dress for you all today. And you're trying to figure out what to wear. It's that kind of a vibe. You don't have to be on an island or at a tropical resort, some fancy establishment to wear one of these fragrances. But I love setting the mood for the fragrances that we're gonna talk about. Before we get going, a lot of the fragrances that I'm gonna talk about in this video could have been in the coconut video, beach video as well, because they smell beachy in some ways, and some of these have a coconut note as well. And some of those fragrances could have been in this video. So in that sense, they're really kind of interchangeable, but I have to figure out a way to divide up all these fabulous fragrances I want to share. There are a lot of usual suspects that make it into these videos, and you're going to hear about some of them on this video too, because I think they deserve to be highlighted. They get into a lot of videos because they're really, really good. They're really awesome fragrances. If you're into this kind of tropical, floral kind of profile, the queen of them all, arguably, is Terracotta Le Parfum from Guerlain. I love that this has a combination of yellow and white florals, Tierra, Alang Alang, Jasmine. It has a musky base. There is some coconut in there. There's something really sweet and smooth and creamy about this to me. I feel very sort of regal when I put this on and very put together. I didn't love this at first. It took me a while to enjoy this, but once I got it, I got it. I had to wear it on my skin, let it warm up. It warms up beautifully on the skin. It's just a really elegant summer floral smell, maybe a bit on the mature side. So if you're kind of the kind of person that likes younger, lighter, fruitier sorts of smells, perhaps this won't be your jam. But for those of you that appreciate a fully matured floral with a tropical edge, this is a beautiful one. I have two backups of this and you can see the dent that I've put in this bottle. Another usual suspect in these summer fragrance videos is Bronze Goddess from Estee Lauder, but this is the 2017 version that is in a bronze colored bottle. This is a beautiful, warm fragrance, kind of like terracotta, sort of in the same realm, except this one is maybe a little bit brighter in the opening and has a more ambery base. You get some citrus notes in the opening and this beautiful vanilla frangipani uh, middle, and then it settles down into this ambery musky base, which I think is rather sensual, beautiful evening fragrance. Or if you want to have a sexy summertime day, you can live your best life in this <laughs> in your floral dress with this beautiful bronze goddess. This is my favorite of the bronze goddess line. It does have coconut in it in the middle, which lends to me along with the vanilla and the musk and the amber, this like depth and creaminess to this fragrance that makes it beautiful for your tropical evenings on your islands or heck, I'm here in central Virginia in Richmond, you know, when it gets warm here <laughs> and we go out to dinner, this is a great one to wear with my summer dress. This next fragrance has shown up in a lot of coconut videos and I get it because it does have coconut in it. It's Dolce Garden. The reason I have it here is because to me it's more creamy and fruity. Even though there aren't any fruit notes in here, there is, I'm going to read you some of the notes, frangipani, alang alang, vanilla absolute, almond milk, sandalwood. There's some citrus at the top, but there's something very sort of luscious and rich and juicy about this to me that I think makes it more than just a coconut fragrance that puts it to me into that tropical resort flower kind of a category. And it's a very feminine, pretty fragrance. 
another one that's great for both daytime and evening. There's something rather sexy about it. I find it mass appealing with others when I wear it. And my husband in particular really thinks this fragrance is amazing. So Dolce Garden. Another quintessential summer fragrance is Erin Hibiscus Palm. This one is a bit on the pricier side, but if you like a tropical floral with some creaminess, it's really, really hard to beat this one. In fact, maybe this one, Guerlain's uh, Terracotta, Bronze Goddess, the three of those are sort of sisters to me with a little bit of different flair to each. A few of the notes in here that are different, this obviously has hibiscus. There's a Lang Lang in here too. It has ginger and lotus, which I think give this a little bit of a brighter, lighter, happier feel feel a little zestier than the others that I've mentioned so far. Those are more on the mature side. This is a little bit lighter in texture, but it does have coconut, milk, vanilla, and musk and other white florals in here, which square it up with the other three that I've mentioned in terms of being a beautiful tropical fragrance. Uh, there's something a little bit more like orange about this as well, like a soft orange, a juice, orange juicy about it orange juicy. There's something a little orange juice-esque about this throughout the fragrance that's a little bit different than the others. So, but these all four of the ones that I've mentioned can be bosom buddies having brunch together uh, and, and have grown up together in the same family, but then went their separate ways as, as they matured. Erin Hibiscus Palm. Actually, there's a fifth sister or cousin or friend that would crash the brunch with terracotta, with hibiscus palm, with bronze goddess, and with dolce garden. And it is one of my favorite fragrances, and it's a great one for winter all year round, fall, summer, spring, fall, everywhere. I love this. It's Dolce & Gabbana, the only one intense. Such a pretty little fragrance. This would maybe have the most personality of the bunch at the brunch of tropical floral fragrances. It has apple and neroli in here, which give the top of this fragrance this really happy, bright opening that um, is sassy, like a sassy, happy happy, bright opening, but then it becomes equally sexy and grown like the others because of white florals in here. There's a jasmine note, there's coconut, orange blossom, vanilla. It has a woodiness in the base. This to me is a playfully sexy summer resort kind of a fragrance. I would wear this on date night just like the others, but this would be the one that I would wear if I want it to be playful and sexy at the same time. The only one intense set of fragrances that I want to talk about stand out to me because they are particularly juicy in a very summery way. I hate the bottle. I don't hate it. I just, I wish it were different. It's actually kind of playful and cute, but I also hate it. And it's Harajuku Lovers Electric Pop G. This is part of Gwen Stefani's fragrance group. And that comes off. <laughs> and this fragrance Ooh, first of all, you can get this for like $12 on the gray market, like Fragrance Net and places like that. This is a pina colada fragrance, okay? It's coconut, it's musky, it's got like I think a whipped cream thing happening, but it smells very pina colada. Although there isn't a pineapple note listed or anything like that, it has that kind of brightness that you would get in a pina colada, a virgin pina colada, because I mean, this is almost like a little kid's fragrance, but it's so, so good. If you layer this, it doesn't last the longest, which is my problem with it but if you layer it over a coconut body cream or something like that it should give you decent longevity enough for your outing on the resort for your lunch out your brunch out your dinner out or whatever it's a really really good one don't sleep on it because the bottle is so crazy and I've got to go retrieve the finger puppet that fell away across the room <laughs> but for $12 this is a gorgeous fragrance that's hard to beat really really delicious delicious opening and nice dry down too and speaking of juicy pineapple fragrances, Girl of Now Shine from Ili Saab. This has pineapple at the top. It has all of the DNA of Girl of Now, meaning it's this sweet, nutty fragrance. It's very alluring and sexy. It's got white florals and yellow, jasmine and alang alang, but there's pineapple and there's pear in the opening, which together are really bright, yet also has this like sensual depth to it that's really unique and interesting. This is a pretty strong and long lasting fragrance. So I'd 
say go in with about four ish sprays to see how that feels to you before you overspray. Very luscious, juicy, but well rounded fragrance with the pear and the almond to give it like this smooth roundness. I don't know how to describe it, but it like has a lot of dimension. So it's not just your typical like fruity floral fragrance. This is fruity, it's floral, and it's deeply sensual, if you ask me, but not overly mature. So absolutely fantastic fragrance for the summer and for that resort kind of lifestyle. Another luscious, juicy, juicy fragrance is Angel Ice Star. This is the Eau de Toilette. And I think this came out last year, 2021. Pineapple and coconut all the way. Really strong on the opening. Strong pineapple, strong coconut. I believe there's vanilla in here also. Really juicy, all the way tropical fruit bowl, but in the mo with the most tropical fruits in it. I'm talking about like strong pineapple, maybe even maybe even a little hint of watermelon that isn't listed in the notes. I get a little bit of that super like juicy um, summer fresh squeezed juice kind of a thing happening here. This is delicious. And layering tip, this goes really well over your mango and pineapple creams from Bath and Body Works. And I think there's a mango banana kind of yogurt body buttery kind of thing from the body shop that you might want to try also. Really, really delicious, delicious edible fragrance. Before Angel Ice Star came out in 2020 was Angel Eau Crozier, which is what this is with the blue and like the berry colors in it. The year before that, in 2019, there was an Eau Crozier that had a mango, prominent mango note. This one, the 2020 version, is supposed to be more fig, but I'll tell you, it smells like mango and pineapple and coconut to me. Not quite as juicy as Ice Star. I would say this one has a little bit more patchouli in it than the Ice Star, which really features the pineapple and the coconut that tropical fruitiness more prominently than this, which is a tad bit closer to the original angel DNA. But if I didn't know any better, I'd tell you that this had some mango in it. I don't know if it's the fig that's coming across and reading that way, but definitely a combination of like a salty fig, mango, pineapple, uh, coconut kind of concoction in here as well with more patchouli. So a little bit more on the earthy end than the others, but really delicious for summer as well. I'm going to head next into the mostly floral, tropical floral territory. But before I do that, I have one more juicy fragrance to share with you. It's Laura Mercier Ombre Vanille. I talked about the Laura Mercier Almond Coconut in the coconut video. This is the Ombre Vanille. And listen, if you've ever been in New York in the summer and had one of the little, they're called coquitos, that you scoop out, the guys scoop out out of the little cart Imagine like if you haven't had that, imagine a coconut gelato. This smells a lot like that. It's a very juicy kind though. I know there's something really delicious. It makes my mouth water. Forget what Fragrancica says are the notes in here. You get coconut and vanilla and just this like brightness to it that is really, really delicious. Not the longest lasting fragrance, one that you will have to spritz on over and over again, but worth it and just absolutely delicious, delicious, delicious. Perhaps it actually belongs in the coconut video, but here you have it. <laughs> This fragrance, fair enough, could have been in the coconut video. Like I said at the beginning, the fragrances in this video could have easily been in that one, and many of those could have been in here, but I had to break it up. Here is La Nuit Trésor Nude from Lancôme, which is one of my favorite from the line. I liked this more than La Nuit Trésor, which I ended up selling. It was a bit cloying for me, beautiful fragrance, but I found myself not wanting to wear it as much as this one, which yes, it does have coconut in it, but it also has rose and it has vanilla. And so in that way, this is a very highly feminine, tropical floral fragrance in my mind that would be wonderful to take on vacation. It has a lightness to it, yet substance and is beautiful and feminine and gorgeous for a night out, date night dinner. Won't offend anyone. You can douse yourself in this. It is not an overpowering fragrance at all. Moderate longevity, moderate sillage and all of that, but delicate coconut rose vanilla fragrance. Really, really pretty. One that isn't talked about a lot. Some people are into this, but not a whole lot. You don't hear about it everywhere. And it's Sunkissed Hibiscus from Nest, which has a beautiful coconut and frangipani combination in it. There's something super creamy about this to me. It to me is the color yellow with some hints of amber in it as well. 
I think the coconut in here is fairly prominent. And you also get, in addition to the frangipani, a tuberose gardenia combination that I think ele elevates this fragrance into your grown woman mature category. I could see people of all ages rocking this, but definitely ladies in more mature stages who want to smell more on the womanly side than on the sort of younger, fruity, floral, and nothing wrong with any one of those. But yeah, this is to me a more mature, beautiful, creamy fragrance. And I just adore this bottle. Some of the Nest fragrances... Well, all of the Nest fragrances are hit or miss. I either really like them or really don't. This one I really, really do like. Very, very mature, beautiful, tropical fragrance. Next is a fragrance I just need to go on and eat crow about because I talked about it in an anti haul video that I was not going to pay full price for a fragrance that didn't last long at this price point. And then I tried it in Sephora and just knew I had to have it. <laughs> So it is officially home with me and it is Kayali Utopia Vanilla Cocoa 21. You've heard about this a lot. It's made it into a lot of summer videos and with good reason. This has to be one of the more gorgeous summer florals that I have laid my nose on. Yes, people talk about this as being a coconut fragrance. There's coconut in here, yes, but I think the coconut in here lends a creaminess to this. The real stars here are the florals and I want to make sure I read some of these to you. Jasmine Sandbach, Tuberose, Gardenia. There's a pear blossom and a lemon note in here, which I think adds some beautiful brightness to this. I find this to be very sweet and subtle at the same time. I want to wear this today, so I'm going to douse myself. Hold on, let me do the, the Ange from 50 Cents UK. This is going to be my fragrance of the evening. So, so, so beautiful. Ugh, this is like the younger, more cherub-like sister of terracotta because it leans heavily in the floral direction, but in a light and playful way, yet highly elegant and feminine as well. This is that beautiful white dress, you know, kind of a fragrance. It's your elevated, I'm going to meet the parents. I don't know where we get these scenarios from. Bear with me. This is when you want to smell really pretty at the dinner table. Not necessarily sexy. It's not a sexy fragrance to me. It is a very pretty, pretty girl fragrance. You want to smell lovely. You want people to notice you because you smell delicate, light, and pretty in a floral way with that creamy coconut sort of underneath the whole thing. This is this is gorgeous. Now, I have to say, the reports last summer about the longevity not being good, maybe, maybe not. I find this to have moderate longevity and projection, which I'm fine with. I can deal with that. So, and I did get it on sale and it's a love, you guys. The next one is a fragrance that maybe should be somewhere between the juicy, fruity ones and these floral ones. So it's a bit misplaced here, forgive me. And you've heard a lot about it, I think, if you're on IG and you follow fragrance reviewers and so forth. Accendus, Accendus, Luna Dulcius or Dulcius. The thing about this is that people described it to be a coconut fragrance mostly, like an elevated, elegant coconut. Yes, there's coconut in here, but I find this to be more so of a citrusy, floral, musky kind of a fragrance with coconut in the background. So this is not coconut prominent to me the way that I was expecting based on reviews. And that's okay. People smell things differently. I very, very much do not care for this bottle top. It is reminding me of Armoff Eternia. And we've talked about that bottle quite a bit. So I don't love that, but the fragrance is rather pretty in here also. A little bit more in the, like I said, citrus direction. I also find this to be sweeter. There's a prominent vanilla and tonka bean note in here. So it's a very complex fragrance, but it's not coconut dominant, at least not to me the way that I was expecting based on reviews, but it's pretty. It's like a sweet, summery, citrusy, floral fragrance. There's peony and rose in here with the coconut in the background to add just that touch of tropical something that makes it good for this video. This next one is a gorgeous yellow floral dominant fragrance, Casta Diva from Nobile 1942. It has a prominent alang alang note and it's the alang alang that kind of leans in the banana-ish direction. So it's got that like fresh fruit flavored, juicy fruit kind of a thing happening in here with a little bit of greenness. And as it progresses, you get more of the frangipani, you get jasmine, you get osmanthus and some musky and vanilla notes in here. This is beautiful. I'm so happy that I have this. I brought this home. I brought this home. I brought this home. 
This came in the mail. It came in the mail in a huge Nobile 1942 haul that I did and was one of the biggest surprises of the bunch. If you like yellow tropical florals, this is one to definitely check out. Lighthearted, bright, beautiful floral, but it has depth from vanilla and musk in here that I think is just gorgeous. One that I'm not going to spend a lot of time on, I actually sold this, but you might be interested in it, is Comptoir Sud Pacifique Aloha Tiara. It smells like tiara. It's a very, very crisp, clean tiara kind of fragrance. I just have other fragrances with tiara that I prefer more, but you might love it, and it's reasonably priced, and it's not one that I would tell people not to get. If you like tiara and want to grow that collection, check that one out. I would say the same exact thing about two other fragrances that I sold, but I do think are pretty. One is Korloff Gold which is a lot like the other yellow floral coconut fragrances that I mentioned. Beautiful, bright fragrance with a delicious, delicious opening, but it only lasts about 30 minutes. If you don't mind that and you want an affordable one, check that one out. I think I got it for somewhere in the $20 to $30 neighborhood and one that you can carry around and just douse yourself in and never offend anyone. Likewise, another affordable one, if you, especially if you find it on sale, is from Yves Rocher and it's the Manoy fragrance. There's an actual like spray fragrance. There's an oil. That whole range is fun to check out. It's on the lighter end, maybe a little bit too light in texture for me, but it might be right up your alley. I'm also going to give a mention to, ah, I just love this bottle. It is like the cutest bottle in my collection. Adorable. I'm a Disney fanatic. As you know, I've got my Disney vacation plan, as you heard in the coconut video. So this is more about the bottle than the fragrance, but the fragrance is pleasant too. It is not my favorite of the bunch. It has coconut in it. It's like a soapy coconut with a little hint of floral. If you like the bottle, find this half off. House of Siage does half off sales. That's how I got this. I would have never paid full price for this, but it is just absolutely just to die for. I just love this bottle. So pretty. <laughs> And the fragrance is a very clean, soapy, happy coconut. Doesn't last very long. Not my favorite, but it's, it's decent. Then if you can find it and you like the thought of a fragrance that is both like solar, meaning it smells like notes out in the sun. Is that what we think of as solar? When I think of solar, I actually think of how skin smells after it's been heated up by the sun and you've got sunblock on. That's what comes to mind when I think of solar uh, notes, but if that sounds good to you, along with some soft, beautiful, sensual yellow florals, and you can get your hands on this because it's discontinued, Sun de Joya from Armani is absolutely beautiful to me. A lighter fragrance. It's not a super like heavy powerhouse fragrance at all. It's very close to the skin. The longevity is not the best. I think it's moderate. I probably got you know, six-ish or so hours out of it, but it stayed close to the skin. But there's something so ambery and sensual about this. It's the heart notes that make this fragrance to me. And it's frangipani, it's a lang a lang. I had to look just to make sure I'm telling you the right thing. And jasmine sandbach. And then it's got vanilla in the base as well. This is what I pictured that terracotta would actually be like. Mm. This to me is what I smell like if I have spent a day at the beach not the stinky version of myself, but like the ideal romanticized version of what I smell like at the end of a day on the beach. Let's get real. Have you spent a whole day at the beach? Have you swam in the ocean and come back and you're sitting under that umbrella? You kind of don't, don't smell your best. So all these people that are out here talking about, I smell like I swam in the ocean. I do it too. I talk about that too. But really, you don't smell that great after a full day sweating your tushy off at the beach. But let's imagine the romanticized version. You've, you're sun-kissed, your skin has warmed up, you had sunblock on, and you apply something along the lines of like your, your Paco Rabanne Olympia, except toned down, not nearly as loud. Something that's a little vanilla. Is it salty? I don't think it's salty, but more like vanilla, very soft yellow florals. That is Sun de Joya. It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Maybe, maybe even like the very, very faintest hint of freshly popped popcorn. Very, very, very faint. Gorgeous. Subtle. Not a projection beast. It's not going to last for forever but there's something quintessentially resort and summer and beachy about this all at once. Then a fragrance that I love to wear in the late evening when I want to feel sensual, sexy, and summery. <laughs> it's a fragrance I haven't heard anyone talk about. Demarbella by Primera Perfumes. Listen, 
This smells like a creamy coconut with a hint of light blue Dolce & Gabbana. A hint. It's not like super loud in your face. Not Think about like the citrusy aspects, maybe not the apple part. Like Mixed with a hint of men's aftershave and a touch, a touch, like an iota of 80s cologne. So it's both feminine and masculine. This fragrance has such a sexy energy about it. I would wear it and I think it smells wonderful on my husband. He doesn't like it, but I think it smells great on him. Absolutely beautiful, creamy, creamy fragrance with this depth to it, this sensual depth that is just everything you want your summer nights to be. Speaking of summer nights, I have three more. Can you hang with me? I know this is a long video. These next three, I would only advise for cooler summer days, like you've got a nice breeze coming off the ocean and maybe it's overcast or your evenings, your evenings when it has, the sun has gone down, it's not quite as sticky and heavy and humid as it is in the summertime and you're ready for something deeper and heavier. Fan Your Flames from Nishane. Beautiful, beautiful, slightly masculine leaning, but still beautiful enough for a lady to wear coconut boozy fragrance. It has a rum in here. There's vanilla. There's tobacco. If you like a good cigar, get your cigar, get your nice aged rum and sit out on the balcony of your resort room with this on and live your best life under the night stars listening to that ocean. <laughs> Beautiful, thick, fragrance but not overwhelming for summer it smells amazing on my husband i purchased it for him but i sneak spritzes of this too because it is fantastic two more evening fragrances for you although i'd wear this one during the day maybe in the heat i'm not sure i have to feel bold this is not for the faints of heart alang alang nosy bee which is the name of an island from paris monte carlo this is newer in my collection a very strange fragrance it has alang alang at the top, in the middle, and in the base, there's some citrus notes at the top too. There is, to me, a heavy vanilla in here as well. It has vetiver and cedar, so there's a little bit of woodiness in the base. I find this to be a very elegant fragrance, a little bit much if you're not ready for it, but once you get used to the smell of it, it is very unique, intoxicating. I find this to be an intoxicating fragrance that draws you in. It's daring and not for people that like a predictable fragrance. So if you're that kind of person that smells a fragrance and if it's not what you're thinking it should be like, you're immediately turned off. No, 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 no. Don't mess around with Ylang Ylang Nosy Bee because it will surprise you. <laughs> but for those of you that like a fragrance to grow on you and once it does, you're like in love for life, this might be one that you'd want to check out. Along the same lines, a very daring, bold, dramatic fragrance that I would suggest only for summer evenings, Cure Elang from Ili Saab. Leather and Elang. Oh, absolutely, like, tremendously animalic in all the right ways. This is like, makes you purr. <laughs> Being super silly. But this is... There's something really like zoo-like in, in the best way possible. It's very strong. It's very pungent. There's a woodiness about this. It is just divine in so many ways. Very strong alang alang, very strong, but soft, smooth, uh, refined leather smell with animalic aspects that are just, they attract you rather than repel. They're not like a stinky animalic. They're like a what you got on kind of animalic. <laughs> and like I said, I would suggest only for late evening, if you know what I mean. I hope you have enjoyed this tropical, floral, and fruity fragrance video and that you have found something to spark your interest or reignited an interest in a fragrance that you have on your shelf. If you have any other recommendations in this category, please drop them in the comments so that we can all enjoy. Take care, my friends.